You guys ever feel like you're getting in your own way? Are you a business leader that is so worried about your business scaling and different parts of your organization crumbling that you're required for most key decisions, people can't act without you, you feel like you've got to figure out how to scale, but you just don't know how. I am guilty of all of these things. And so that is why I am so excited to talk with Todd Westra, who is an organizational business guru and also the host of the Leadership in Business podcast. So welcome, Todd. Thank you so much for joining Lauren and me today. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for having me on. Oh, this is so exciting. And I have a, a million and one questions and I'm sure Lauren does as well as a business owner. So um, first of all, tell me a little bit about how you got started um, consulting companies on how to scale effectively. Well, you know, in my opinion, there's no better consultant than someone who's been there and done that. And so uh, I never really thought about consulting anybody or charging them for consulting until I actually felt like I knew my craft and I knew my trade. And so I've spent literally almost my entire life uh, building and operating businesses, uh, some that scaled, some that were, were more boutique. And because of that experience, I feel like I, I actually have something to teach and something to coach people through. I love that. Well, that's wonderful. And I, um, I'd love to know, how did you get started in this? Where did you get your first business experience? <laughs> well, I love to tell the story that everything I learned about business, I learned on my paper out. Ah. And I say that to young people today and they look at me with, with no paper route. Because... <laughs> Yeah, they're like, what is a paper route? What's a paper route? <laughs> <laughs> right. And so I grew up in the Seattle area and, and when I was a little kid, they were developing like crazy and uh, the kids in the new neighborhood got all the cool toys and cool things. And my brother and I said, that is not fair. And we were the eight, seventh and eighth kids of, out of nine in our family. And uh, my mom said, well, if you really want those things, go, go figure something out. And so we, we got a paper out and on the paper out, we had to go sell to our neighbors we had to. Uh, we had a supplier that dropped off all the goods. We did the fulfillment. We did the collections, and then we paid an invoice every month. And here was an eight and eleven year old. I ended up doing it for five years because I just loved the fact that I could I could keep selling new neighbors all the time and building my monthly revenue, and uh, that was fascinating to me. And that's how I've kind of thought about life since that time was just, you can build a business and generate revenue in almost any industry you want. Yeah, that's amazing. I love that story. And I love the fact that you were so entrepreneurial from a young age. And <laughs> now I have ideas for my own children. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is awesome. Well, so tell us a little bit more about your leadership and business podcast. What can we learn from this? Well, oddly enough, you know, I, I was, um, I had built and scaled, you know, for the last, in 2006, I started outsourcing uh, some of my operations offshore and I built a, uh, I built a business in the Philippines actually shortly thereafter. And for 13 years, I was heavily involved and built a, a pretty large company, about 350 employees uh, doing call center work and customer service and creative design work, things like that. And, and I let go of that a few years ago because I started doing consulting work. And I did consulting work with Google up in the Bay Area and a lot of team building, a lot of leadership training. And it was just kind of a whole different style of life. I went from about 200 employees down to uh, nothing, you know, almost solopreneuring it and absolutely loved it. Well, when, when COVID hit though, um, Google canceled all in-person things and that was a pretty hard hit. Uh, here I was enjoying a practical retirement, uh, running two or three events a month and, uh, and making as much money as I was when I had a huge offshore operation. Mm -hmm. So I was a little shell-shocked and I decided, well, this might last a month or two. I want to do something fun. And, uh, and so I started a podcast and I had the concept that, that really what I wanted to do was build my, my presence on LinkedIn I hardly had a, a, a connection following of any sort at the time. And I thought, well, if I, if I create good content with other leaders, that should build to my 
uh, momentum and hopefully build my presence on LinkedIn and I can start a good consulting firm. Mm -hmm. And um, so I did that. And in the first week of inviting people to be on my podcast, because LinkedIn only allowed for a 10 minute upload. And I thought, well, this will be easy. I got 10 minutes. I can talk to anybody about anything I want. Mm -hmm. I made preset questions, six questions in nine minutes. And, uh, and I started interviewing CEOs and founders. And what I found was everybody wanted to talk about their business. And mm -hmm. so uh, in the first week of really making a push, I booked 22 CEOs on my podcast. And so I was like, oh, this is, this is the best. Yeah. This is the best. And for 10 weeks straight, I ended up doing over 200 interviews in 10 weeks. <laughs> wow. wow. I bet you got so much amazing data. Oh my gosh, Amy, it, it is unbelievable. Um, the, the thing that I, I started to notice were trends because I would ask every CEO and founder six questions, but really four that were the meat of the conversation. Two were kind of fluff. Well, three were kind of fluff, but who are you? What do you do? Mm -hmm. What is it that you love about growing your business? What is it that you hate? What's your biggest challenge in growing your business? And what's your advice to those who are struggling with that same problem? And mm -hmm. When I would ask those questions, Amy, it was like, honestly, it started to sound like a broken record. Mm. Almost all of them had the same pattern of both the things they loved and the, the things that challenged them in growth. Very. So, so what does, what do entrepreneurs and CEOs and founders, what draws them? What do they love? And what are the challenges? And then Lauren and I will weigh in and let you know. If yeah. <laughs> no, I, in fact, I would love for you to answer that now. And then I'll tell you whether you're, you're on board with everyone else. I love <laughs> you guys you, tell Lauren, me. You go first. What do you love about first. Owning your own business? I love doing the work. I love being the behind the scenes person that helps other people succeed and achieve their goals. That's, that's why I went into business because I had a skill that would help other people. Uh, what I hate is that I've never been great at surrounding myself with the right team. I've never, um, I've never managed to collect the right support. So I think as an entrepreneur, many of us are inclined to do all the work ourselves just because it's faster to just do it yourself. But then you run out of hours in the day and you run out of life in your life. So I think those two challenges, I'm probably not alone. <laughs> that, sounds, that sounds very common, I think. Yes. And you? Amy? Yeah, so for me, like, I love marketing. I want my goal, my life goal is to be the best marketer in the world. That is a very ambitious goal, I am aware. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a good one. It's a good one, and it's something that I'll always pursue, right? Because right. there will always be somebody who knows knows more about different aspects, but that's my goal. And so, like, I love the craft. I love being able to use it to help people grow their businesses. I think that's so, so rewarding for me. And I have the same problem. The scaling is really difficult and it's hard to pass your baby off to someone else who may not care as much as you. And so I think finding people who care, care like you do and really mm -hmm. care about the customer like you do is hard to find. Yeah, totally, totally. Mm -hmm. You guys both nailed it. And did you notice the trend? Mm -hmm. Both of you uh, in, in, the, in the thing that you love is a little bit different. But in the, in the problem and the challenge you guys both faced, it was all about the people, isn't that right? Mm -hmm. Finding the right people to share your vision, finding the right people that, that, can, that can take your baby, finding the right people that can execute at the same level you can. Did I hear you correctly? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Well, you guys are right in line with everybody. I, I was shocked because, you know, as entrepreneurs, I think that most of us have a tendency to live in our own right? We kind of create our own environment. Mm -hmm. And, and oftentimes in our own little world, we kind of think that nobody gets me, nobody really understands me and my challenges. And yet when I embarked on this little journey, it was um, so fascinating to me mm -hmm. because I started to learn and understand that I was not alone. I had the same issues. In fact, very often I would hear your favorite part about growing your business was the people. The biggest challenge in your business was the people. <laughs> Different people though. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. Right. And so what I started to learn was that there are many operators in businesses who are horrible 
at delegation. They, they have very unclear processes and they're, they're, uh, the, the tools that they use are maybe out of date or just not really capable of, of scaling their business. And so I found that those three things, the people, the processes, and the tools became the most go-to answers in almost every response I heard from every CEO and founder. And I went on to do another 50 before the year ended. So I, I rounded the year off with 250 CEOs and founders, almost all of them identified people, processes, and tools as their biggest challenges. Mm -hmm. There was a few of them that talked about money and financing and round, you know, those kinds of things. But all in all, the biggest lesson I learned, and, and I bet a lot of people in the audience would agree, is that we as human beings have a really hard time accepting the fact that there are people around us who could do things better than us sometimes. Mm -hmm. And there are processes that if we really sat down and thought about what we do, there is a process to the way we do it. And we just have a hard time explaining that process to other people. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's a big, I think that's the, one of the biggest challenges and what keeps businesses from scaling as they could. Mm -hmm. How do you go about hiring someone that you think might be good, but if they're not your skill set, you can't really evaluate them very well? Like I've ha I've had that problem. I don't know, Lauren, if you've had that problem too, but that's that's one of my challenges. Is I'm like they seem good because they have a skill set that I don't have, but how do right. I tell if they're good, a good like a good version or a not so good version? I love that question, and and let me give you the answer. You know. We can hire people that get along with us personality wise and have different skill sets. But even if you hired the best marketer, so Amy is the best marketer in the world right now, right? <laughs> and so if I needed a good marketer, I would say, Amy, come on over. I need to hire you to help me with my marketing. You'd be all excited and you'd be totally thrilled to, to present to me this awesome marketing plan. Mm -hmm. But here's the caveat. I can't let go of certain things that I like to do in my business. <laughs> <laughs> so Amy, you jump in to help me with my marketing. And I'm like, no, I don't want you to do that part because I've already got that figured out. No, I, I don't need you to do this part because I don't need you. Anyway, you, you get where I'm going with this. Mm -hmm. This is- well, I've this had is, a client before like, that hired me to be his marketing person and then yeah. they're not with me the entire time. <laughs> and I finally was like, this is my opinion and you're clearly the boss, you know? And so like, exactly oh, so th those kinds of things can, I, are, I understand are probably very common. So Amy, this is the, this is the biggest problem of almost every founder is the fact that they just keep getting in the way they cannot pull themselves out. And the way you pull yourselves out is this, this is the, one of the key, key things that I think every business owner needs to rethink on a regular monthly quarterly basis. Mm -hmm. What is it that I'm doing that. I'm not defining for my new hire. So, so what I like to tell people to do is define each role, build an org chart even. And, and I do this, honestly, I do this regularly. Like even when I have a new business idea, I build an org chart. I say, okay, here's my marketing department. Here's my sales department. Here's my fulfillment. Here's my um, sales team, right? Like those are your general categories of, of C-level people in an organization. Mm -hmm. I think, okay, what is it that I need my sales team to do? I make a list of all the things I expect that sales team to do. What do I want my marketing team to do? And then I, I literally make bullets of everything I want that team to do. Mm -hmm. What does my onboarding specialist need to do? Mm -hmm. Boom, 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 boom. Mm -hmm. And so as I've defined these roles, now when I come to Amy and say, Amy, you're the best marketer I know. You're the best in the world. Here are the things I need to offload. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now you walk into our relationship and you say, and I can make decisions. And I say, yes. And I can run my own team in here. Yes. Mm -hmm. These are the confines I need you to do. Now, what does Amy do? Amy goes crazy, right? Amy goes to town on within those confines that I outlined what she will and can do for me. Right. Yeah. And yeah, that get reminded and you get reminded that this is what you've asked her to do. Right. And so it, it takes yeah. the onus off of, off of her and it also makes it easier for you to let it go. Totally. Yeah, I think that's that. so valuable. And I'm thinking about like 
five instances right now that I could use that. And I think that's so, so helpful because sometimes it's also hard. Like if you're in the position where you're reporting to someone, yeah. it's hard to kindly and gently remind them like, you've asked me to do this part and I'm, I, I am wanting to do this part for you. Right. So I right. think that's really interesting. I think that most founders and owners, when they have someone who has the spine to remind me of that, mm -hmm. it, it makes them say, oh yeah, you're right. Let me get out of the way because I don't think, you know, in, in all of my post interview conversations with these CEOs and founders, I, I would ask things like that. I'm like, well, how do you know when you, when you effectively get out of the way? Mm -hmm. And, and it, those types of responses were interesting because it was like, you know what, when I have someone tell me I'm in the way, that's when I know I've got the right person. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that there are the occasional people who really just can't let go mm -hmm. of those things. You don't want to work for those people anyway. Yeah. Right. There's so enough constant battle. Yeah. It's a constant battle. Totally. And, and one thing that I think is super interesting too, is like, I've asked several CEOs, you know, what is the success to being able to build like a hundred million dollar business instead of a $5 million business. And that is the thing that they always say. They're like, you have to step back because at, like he's at this one guy was actually pretty specific and he, he has very successfully started and exited numerous businesses right. in, in the tech space. And he says, you can get to about 5 million in revenue. This was his like formula. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can get to about 5 million in revenue with your, um, with, you know, with you leading the way, like, and kind of taking on everything yourself. Right. You're stop right here. Not, there is not one person that, that has like the capability to get beyond 5 million in revenue or whatever, you know? So, so anyway, he's like, and he's like, I think only 5% of entrepreneurs and founders can ever get there. I, 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 I would agree with that. L Lauren, what do you think about that? Because we've had this discussion before. Yes, we have. And the whole, listen, the whole theory of getting out of your way, the whole idea of having a team of people who you trust, and it yeah. really has everything to do with trust. So Amy, that's how I look at it. I mean, I, in order to test people, I give them a test, mm -hmm. see the results. I don't know I don't know how to do your job, nor do I want to. That's why you're here. However, right. I know enough to know that it needs to be done. Mm -hmm. So all I can do is cut you loose, let you do it, and then come back and see the results. And the way I learn the results is because I have to check with the client. Now, yep. see if the results got to what we needed to do. And yeah. Todd, the results of this talk, I know, are going to turn into a much longer talk, and we could keep this going for hours. 100%. I know, I know. I'm supposed to wrap up. That was my job. By <laughs> and I'm not doing a good job. because I'm Lauren, so that's what Clubhouse is for. <laughs> All right. We will join you on Clubhouse, but for now, where can people find you? You know, you can find me at toddwester.com. And you can see links to my podcast. You can see links to uh, to my my new business called Moku, and uh, and then and then of course the Biz Games, which we didn't even touch upon. My big team building operation that I do for big corporate uh, clients. But but in reality, right now, the best way to get a hold of me is just to you know if, if there was something that resonated here, you want to talk about it further, just go to withmoku.com or or toddwester.com, and we can we can connect either way. Perfect. Wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us, Todd. It was so fun. Truly my pleasure. Thanks so much. See you again. Thanks so much. We'll be right back. Yeah.